Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Laura with Stitching with Laura. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody is having a great Wednesday. It is the middle of the week already. Well today, I thought since we were talking about this yesterday and it's in the giveaway, I thought I would just continue on stitching it because it is absolutely stunning. It's a 14 count, 37 by 46 centimeters, and it's not very big. It's a partial. So all you're stitching are the, the flowers and the birds, and this background here is not done in, but it will be beautiful when it is done. I can hardly wait. So I'm using number eight, and number eight is... 550 my favorite purple so I thought that's where I was I will just keep stitching on it Let's see come on come on let's get it up there where y'all can see what's going on and I'm using my thimble today sometimes I do too much stitching and my finger gets a hole there and just didn't feel like dealing with that today because all I really wanted to do was stitch. Last night I, I worked a little bit on the Bristol sampler and it, well I did that like before I went to work and then last night I worked on the two birds in the tree in one tree or something like that. It's from Modern Folk Embroidery. It is just gorgeous. I had to rip out a, a section because yeah, it was off. There was supposed to be four um, stitches. I mean, two stitches in between, and I had three, so I had to knock out one side. So, not too bad. I got it restitched. So, I was like, why is this not matching up? It doesn't look exactly the same or something. Yeah, there was something rotten in Denmark right there. What can I say? It happens to me all the time. I don't care if I'm stitching on Ada or even Weave. It, yeah. I get a little carried away and thinking, gosh, I got this. This is going really well. Yeah, you should know there's a reason. Mm hmm. It never fails. But the rest of it's fine, so we're good. And I can't leave something that's, there's something wrong with it and put it down. I have to fix it. So, yeah. This thread, thread is really beautiful. It's nice and soft. And being a 14 count, this is going to be beautiful. Now, I suppose if you wanted to, you could do a single strand on this. You know, like one half, like half stitches, but... I'm doing full cross stitch. What the heck? So I'm using two strands of thread, which helps. I usually do two strands of thread on a 14 count and three strands of thread on a 11 count. I think the coverage is better, but some people might like it, you know, just. Um, just uh, like a half stitch which is just one cross but that's up to you if you think it gives it enough coverage go for it you know sometimes I will take a pattern and literally do like five stitches you know the way it's supposed to be and then I will do it five more stitches in just half and if I think the half is a full coverage that's fine you know I will go to that so it just depends on the pattern and and what I think and sometimes the the thread is fluffier so is that a word fluffier than others and uh, you know it it looks okay so that that's totally up to you. 
if you want to do full or half crosses it is charted and there should be enough thread for it to be full crosses but if you only want to do half crosses go for it <coughs> this doesn't have I don't think no back there's no back stitching in this there may be some uh, nope I was gonna say there might be some uh, what do you call them French knots but there's not there's no back stitching no French knots it's just straight cross stitch so it makes it a nice and easy pattern to work on and I did crunch this which will come out you know you in the end when you're done with it and you got all your colors threaded in there you take it and wash it in warm water and all this printing everywhere I mean even this even this and the the thing down on the bottom so all you'll be left with is the uh, the pattern that you stitched so the rest of it goes away so that's a good thing so yeah I only worked on two things yesterday just was kind of tired I haven't slept well for got about three or four nights and had to take some Tylenol PM or some NyQuil just to pass out because I needed the sleep so too much coffee I have no idea what the deal is okay come on well we're just gonna end that thread right there because it's being a pain but I'm almost to the end hang in there we're getting there there's a lot of this light purple so I thought I'd just knock it out it's the the contrast color you can see how it kind of goes across here and up in there but it'll work Another thread here. Whoops. Dag nabbit. It's sticking to my hands. So I don't know what we're doing tomorrow. Not too much plans. I gotta try to straighten this front room up around so that I can get around. Never can thread a needle with a, a silly uh, thimble on. Just won't work for me. Now I'm going to use the loop method and see how well that works. Since I'm only having to have two strands here. Oh, come on. And it goes right through there that down everybody knows the loop method right well we'll show you let's get some place where you can actually see what I'm doing all right so on the first we'll come this way it'll be fine So you go through the loop and just pull it up and then you go right back down the one you came up and you're in. It's really easy and you don't have to put a What was I going to say? A uh, knot in the back of your thread. Heck, you certainly can. It's your picture. 
Don't let anybody tell you you can't do that. I I did it for years until I learned that loop method. It just, The loop thing just does not work on an 11 count with three strands of thread. I cannot for the life of me get that done. So... Watched a little bit of Grey's Anatomy. I'm about to get through it. It's about time to change repertoires. Again, I got like three that I can put in and not have to watch it so close and just stitch. It, it's working really well for me with that 28 count because some days it takes a hot, hot moment to, uh, I got my copy way over here. Because I don't want to spill it on that canvas. So, little FYI announcement. Do not stitch around any kind of liquid. Because if you get water or coffee, this will all go away. So, I keep it at a distance when I'm stitching on pre-stamped. So I haven't heard from my daughter as far as what we're doing this weekend. Nothing that I can really put my finger on yet. And you want to get a, uh, before I forget, a decent size thread because you don't want it so long that it goes back and forth in the, the canvas a lot because it'll start breaking it down. So what I did was I took I took the big strand and I cut it in half. So this is a half piece and it's probably 16 inches long. But I took one thread out of here and folded it in half and that's how long it's going to be. And that's plenty for going up and down. Yes, you'll probably have to change your needle out several times. But it's better than breaking down the thread. And these Joy Sunday kits, they just stitch so nice and so easy to get your needle through. They have really good needles that they get give you. And they're nice and stiff, if you will. They're not flimsy or cheap. There's nothing cheap about them. You know, I mean, the, the needles. Because I've had some, I've gone through about four times and snap right in half. I've never had that happen with Joy Sunday. Not at all. Oh, goodness. <coughs> I was watching somebody's video this morning and they had worked on uh, Christmas Garden. You know that's my favorite from... From... Uh, Blackbird design. I just love that pattern. Just love it to death. And I was thinking about getting it out and stitching on it for a while. I just love it. I don't know that I'll finish it this year at Christmas, but I've got about mm, a third of it done. Maybe. Maybe that's half. I don't know. But I sure would like to get it done and put up. That way I can put it away for Christmas or just leave it out. You know, the rate we're going, leave it out. Nobody cares. So. I was working on my ham this weekend. I was trying to get it out of the, the plastic thing. And I cut it right there at in the cuticle. It was great with the knife that I didn't know it was quite that sharp. It was special time. I'm trying. I have to get it out of there. Sometimes your thread gets so short that you just can't work with it. So we're just going to get rid of it now. And on the back, oh, I know, don't look at my back. 
um, I just slip it through a few stitches really tight because it's not going anywhere honestly not on these Got thread thread everywhere that was that green I was working on oh there's another piece oh goodness my eye it's just itching that's what happened yesterday during the middle of the floss tube I'm telling you it was a day yesterday put that up there get up there we got three pieces of that I like that purple that's my favorite purple of all time just absolutely beautiful and you just take a, a thread and pull it out just keep pulling and I just kind of shake it out so it didn't get all knotted up and set it up there Here we are again, trying to do this with the thimble in. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So, I don't know what I'm going to work on this week. I try not to make it, you know, a decision. <coughs> ahead of time because that never works for me. At all. Because then I'll find something else, and then some, or something else will come in, and I'll have to start it immediately because, you know, I shouldn't buy more than three, three patterns at one time. Because, yeah, it just never works. Because I want to start all the things, all the things at once. But I am enjoying my 28 count. I can hardly wait to get those patterns from Italy. There'll be something wrong, I'm sure. Or, you know, it'll be beyond my reach. Now that I went and bought them, they weren't too expensive. I'm mean, all things considered. And I did that wrong. See, loop method again. So, put it on your first... Let's see here if I can get you in. Where's my needle? Is that my needle? Okay. So put it cockwise, crossways. There's the loop. You see the loop? And we're going to take the needle, go through the loop, pull it. Then we're going to go on the other side, right back where we came in. And it's all caught. It works lovely. Especially with two threads. Because I can't figure it out on three. I don't know how to do a pin stitch to save my soul. The one person that I've actually seen that in action was uh, Vonna Pfeiffer. I think Gary Far Parr is done it but uh, she was showing how to do a pin stitch but I do not know how to do a pin stitch at all and I know some people with uh, three threads come go down I don't know how to explain it go down back up and like leave a tail and then they'll stitch the rest of the stitching over their tail in the front or in the back I've seen it both ways but I've never done it that way and of course in my counted cross stitch I only use two threads or one and I do it a little bit different now I suppose on the the 11 count you could um, come up I don't know how to explain that either uh, hmm. 
like let me get to my other part. so you'd come up and your thread would be here and I just go over it twice you know like make the first leg of the X I don't have any material hang on Where's my I don't know if I've showed this before, but we're going to do this. And I don't know that this is a pin stitch or not. Hang on, got to get us some thread here. I can't just explain it. Well, it probably go in easier. Okay. Okay. Okay, this is 11 count, I believe. So, when I have three strands, or if you cut off your loop, you know, like you're, you're stitching. Okay, so I've gone underneath, and this is the first square. Now, I left a tail. I'm going to leave it exaggerating long. I'll come back up and hold my, the tail with my other finger. And then just now it's secure it's not going anywhere I pull the excess and I make the cross gravy that sounds like a huge plane and then I just take this thread and just cut it and you have your thread secured and that's what I do with three strands and sometimes I get carried away and put a knot in the end of it just because all I want to do is stitch now I was going to show you okay we are we're going to do an exaggerated Hopefully I can do this. Loop method. Oh, for pity's sake. Get rid of the thimble. Jeez. I'm telling you, not real quick on the uptake today. Okay, we're just using these three. But I wanted to show you what the loop method looked like. In an exaggerated situation usually you'd only have two strands of thread but this way you can at least see this all right so you see I've got I threaded the two ends so you would take your two strands not not six but I just wanted you to be able to see this okay so the two ends go in here loop is right here so we're going to come crossways on your on your first leg go in and here's the loop we're going to pick it up and pull it tight so to speak now as you can see there's the loop i'm going to go back down in where i started from and pull it and it's secure because your loop went back to the back end now I have seen people do that from the back side I can't I have to do it from the top but you get the same effect and then your your thread is secure 
and ready to go. And that's how you avoid making a knot in your fabric. This works for me so much better on 16 count, 14 count, regular count across stitch, or even weave. But that's how we do it. I do not know how to do a pin stitch at all. So, that is how you do that. We'll just keep that in there for when I have to demonstrate something else, if I have to. Get them. Those are sharp, sharp little pointy scissors. They are not gingers. They are Famor. I got these at my, uh, at the sewing place. And it looks like it's nice and pointed, but I don't have my other ones right here. But this point, it'd be fine for this, but when I'm doing counter cross stitch, these are not pointy enough to pick up the loop to, to snip them. But I keep them here because it'll cut thread. I mean, it, it's plenty sharp to cut thread, but yeah. Oh, gosh. Where am I? So I have two pairs, but I did finally get myself a pair of gingers. And the gingers are nice and pointy. But I'm always in the, looking for sharp. Uh, see, even these. See, you can tell the difference. These are much better than these. See how pointy the, the blades are? These work great. And I got I paid five bucks for these at Walmart. I'm sure of it. Yeah. Aren't they beautiful? Because I wanted stork scissors. I, I love stork scissors. They just yeah. They look so old fashioned. There's that word again. Old fashioned. I love it. But I'd never seen any in a color and I just on a whim bought them. Some of the best scissors that I've ever bought, I paid a dollar for. I got them at a, uh, what do you, uh, oh, there, yeah, here they are. I paid a dollar for these scissors. They're not even Fiskars, but they're stainless steel. And I've had these, I bet, for 10 years, and they still have a good edge on them. I finally got a, what do you call it, a thing you, from Fiskars. And you just put it in here. And it'll sharpen them right up. But these are my craft scissors, as you can tell. They have all kinds of crap on them. But they're not even a name brand. Paid buck for them. I've had them for 10 years. And uh, somebody, I can't remember who it was, turned me on to the fact that if you get a piece of foil and you kind of not layer it, but, you know, fold it or whatever, and then cut through the foil, it will sharpen your scissors. Whoops. And I went up the wrong side. Hang on. But, yeah, so if you're ever in the need to sharpen your scissors, drink. Use a piece of foil, and you won't have to go out and buy a scissor sharpeners or look for anything or wait for anything. Just cut it with, and just cut right through the the aluminum foil, doubled over, tripled over. Just cut right through them, and it'll sharpen your scissors in a heartbeat. Now, I don't know about pinking scissors. I'm talking about scissors. Or serrated scissors or whatever. Any other kind. But just straight blade scissors. I don't know what else to call it. Oh, yeah. Kind of chatty today. I am ready for this day to be over with. So we can just get on with the week. And I can have my day off. Whoop. 
whoop, 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 went to the wrong corner. Sorry, I got you so far. Whoops. Oh, that was great. Let's just, there we go. A lot of these little purple squares and this is a 14 count so they're just teeny tiny I find them everywhere they're like little dots but we'll just try to use up this thread you know and finish as many of the light purple squares as we can whoops Once I have the thread out, I just kind of like to use it up. I don't want to have to, whoops, attach it on. So maybe I'll keep this out today and just stitch on it because it's so easy to stitch on. Sometimes I beat my head against a wall and, you know, I want to do it all. But I'm having such fun with that 28 count. It's like I don't want to put it down. I could barely uh, work on the Bristol yesterday, and I love it. But oh, I missed. Hang in there. It's got a piece of fuzz at the end and I'm threading the needle with the thimble on again. Oh, for pity's sake. <sighs> Some days, folks. Some days. This is why I have needle threaders. Yep, see how fast that was? I was watching the lady on Fat Quarter Shop and she just folds it in half and she's gone. I'm like, really? I can't do that. I can't fold the thread over the edge and shove it into the hole. It never works for me. I don't know if I don't get it tight enough or what, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. Did you see that? I was about to do that backwards. Put it through the loop. And we're good. I hear all my little head bobbers over there clicking. Sounds like there's a clock ticking in the kitchen. I like that feeling. When I was little, my uh, great aunt had a cuckoo clock. Oh, I love that cuckoo clock. I just thought it was so cool that that little bird just jumped right out and went cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd sit there and wait for him to do it again in the next hour. I'm telling you, it occupied my brain for it. For a long time, I am easily amused. And some things never change. But, but I never owned a cuckoo clock. I did have one of those with the big eyes. It was a cat and the um, big eyes and his tail went back and forth. It finally got lost in the shuffle. I don't know whatever happened to it. Just love that clock. I think I bought it on eBay, too. I can't remember. And I have no idea how expensive that cuckoo clock was that she got or where she got it. You know, it might have been something that was made for their time period, you know. I don't know that it was an original, you know, an actual one from Switzerland or or anything. They used to be really big. I also like grandfather clocks, too. Oh, 
I just like that noise that it makes. I can't tell you. Just makes my heart sing. And it makes you feel like you're someplace else. In a different time period. And it's not like we had those kind of clocks when I was little, you know, in my mother's house. She had a, a new, it didn't work. It was an, I mean, it worked. You had to crank it up. Not crank it. It had a key to it, if you will. But very rarely did it run, I don't think. It's not something we had running all the time. She had it more there for looks. Because that thing was about 100 years old. And I let my my sister have it. Because some days I just can't keep track of the good stuff. So that's fine with me. You know, somebody's taking care of it. Her, uh, my mother's father was a watchmaker. And he'd also fix clocks and stuff. And uh, somebody had brought that in, or he got it a trade or something. I don't know. I can't remember the whole story, but my mother ended up with that clock. So, yeah. All right, guys. Well, I think that's going to be about it today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm just going to try to lay that out. Doesn't look like we got a whole lot done, but we did. It's coming along. Coming along. Thanks for joining me today, guys. It's always a pleasure. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And please hit the bell. And that way you'll know when my next video comes out. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Do all the things. God bless, and we will see you tomorrow. Keep stitching.